All right, welcome back. We're going to take a look at the basic Golang web server. So we're going to have a web server listening on port 8080. And when it gets the request for the path slash hello, we want to serve the string hello world. So let's go ahead and run that. And we'll go over to our web browser. And we have localhost, which is just saying, hey, we're running this on our local machine. And we got port 8080. And we need the path hello. There we go. Hello world. So basically, you know, all this has to be what's listening for. Let's say if, if we are requesting on a port that it's not listening on, it's obviously not going to work. So that needs to be correct. And let's say we give it a path that we don't have registered to a function to handle that. Well, we're just going to get a page not found. But if we give it a path that we have a registered function to handle that for us, it'll gladly handle it for us. So we'll send it a request, and the server will send us a response. So let's go ahead and take a uh, top-down look at what's going on here. So first we'll take a look at the HTTP listen and serve function. Now the HTTP package is inside the net package, which is a core Golang package. So it's going to take an address. Um, notice this one, the first one was just uh, semicolon 8080 saying, hey, it's on port 8080. Um, this one we have localhost in front of it. This runs just the same. On the other one, it implicitly knows that we're, yes, we're running it on localhost. Now the second part here is our serve mux or our, our multiplexer. So if we put in nil, it's going to give us the default serve mux. So basically our multiplexer, it's going to match these incoming URLs, again, these register patterns, and it's going to go ahead and call the appropriate function to handle the HTTP response for that particular path. So um, if we get slash hello, you know, it knows, hey, we're going to run this function. So and these type of functions, we're just going to go ahead and call these handlers because they're going to handle the response for that particular path. Now the multiplexer doesn't know which paths are registered to which functions right off the bat because we just created a function here. So to do that, we're using the HTTP dot handle func and it's going to register this path to be handled by this handler function, hello handle func. And one thing you'll notice is these handler functions, you know, they'll have a response writer and a request. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next one here, take this a little closer look at this. So basically, like we're saying, our server is going to go ahead and listen on 8080. Our multiplexer um, is just going to use the default multiplexer. And we're going to go ahead and register some paths. So in this function, we're registering the slash hello path to the hello handle func, as we have the function right here. And the uh, slash about path is being registered with the multiplexer at about handle func. So in a usual uh, application like this, you would usually see quite a few different paths registered to different functions. And you're, because every path you want, and this makes sense, since every different path you want to uh, handle the response a little bit differently, you'll probably serve a different page or whatever. Um, that's why, we, why it is done this way. But anyway, for these handler functions, one thing that you're going to notice is that we're going to have to have a function passed in with this type of function signature. It's going to have to have a response writer and a pointer to a request. As you can see here, we have our HTTP response writer and we have our pointer to HTTP dot request. Now let's go ahead and take a look at those. Okay, so we have our response writer, and this is just an interface here. 
And we have a couple different things in here. One thing to notice is we have our write method. And if we go back and look at our code, notice that we're using that, let's say when we get a request for slash hello, you know, or our, you know, listen and serve is gonna go ahead and run this function to handle that response. We're running this functf printf function and we're giving it a writer. Now since HTTP response writer has a write method, it's you know f printf is expecting an IO uh, dot uh, writer you know interface and since it has that method it qualifies. Now there's some extra things inside of uh, the response writer but that's fine as long as it has that one method that it needs to satisfy the io dot writer you know interface then then it's still of that type of interface and we even have another method here for write header so whatever our status code we want to send is say hey if everything went fine or, or everything didn't go fine we could go ahead and give it a status code and send that and we also have a pointer to an HTTP request. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one as well. And we're again at the HTTP package and we're looking at, that's a little bit long there, and we're looking at uh, the request which is a struct. And there's going to be a whole bunch of different things in there. Uh, for instance, we have our URL. So um, basically the request, this is important information from the client's request. And for instance, what URL they're requesting. There's all that data or anything that we might find useful, we're going to find a lot of information in it inside that res request uh, ver uh, variable. So as you can see here, we're using that at .url.path to get our path. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run that and take a look at that and see if we can get it to pass us back our our path. I froze up here for a second. There we go. <laughs> You know, buy a newer computer. And we'll go back to our browser. We're at slash hello. All right. And it went ahead and passed back our path. Oops, and an exclamation point in there. But as you would expect, we've registered slash hello and slash about. So the about function will be another path. And so if we go to that path, we should get a different handler function handling this. And as you can see, welcome to our gopher powered website. There you go. So just remember that in summary, um, listen and serve is going to be listening and we have to register different paths to that multiplexer that we're using for which handler functions that we want to handle each particular path. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.